Hi there and a very warm welcome to this week's video and this is a long awaited one because today we are diving in again into Octane 2026.1 Alpha and talk about meshlets. Now meshlets are still in development so the features that you can see today are not the final ones and also because it's an alpha it's a little bit unstable. So take all of this with a grain of salt but now without further ado Let's grab your coffee and let's jump right in. And once more, welcome to Cinema 4D Land. Small insert, you might have noticed that I'm not using the cup with the logo anymore. So there was an accident and it fell down and broke. So unfortunately, it's not with us anymore. Hopefully, I'll get a replacement soon. But now back to the zine, let's have a look at it. To show you meshlets, which is probably not going to be a very long video because it's just an on-off toggle, I opted for the Stanford Bunny, which was made by Stanford University and has a whopping of 69,000 polygons, which isn't a lot by today's standards. This is because it came about in 1994, so it's already 32 years old. Before we talk about what meshlets actually are and what they do, let's talk about where to find them. Unsurprisingly, as with most of Octane's mesh functions, this comes with the Octane object tag. So if we create one, you can find a new tab here called Meshlets. Right now, you can see the enable meshlet toggle. Yes, this is the toggle we are talking about in this whole video is grayed out. And this is because we don't have a ID right now. To get one, you can of course do the obvious and hit the update mesh ID, which auto generates one for you but you can also do it manually and for example, call our bunny Stan. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to introduce you to Stan, the stand-in for today. Before we actually turn on meshlets, let's have a talk what meshlets actually are and why we need an ID in the first place. You can think of Octane's meshlets as a one-click solution automated level of detail system. To explain this, I created this cube here and I want to add a SDS modifier to make it more rounded. As you can see, the details aren't enough to make this appear smooth. So what we need to do is add more subdivisions like this. And at some point, it's a smooth outline here. And this is what we are after. The premise with a level of detail and in Octane sense, a dynamic level of detail is that we exactly want the right resolution for our mesh to appear smooth with the rendering. This of course is view dependent. So if I move closer with my camera and get back into grout shading, you can see we get some new edges here. So we would up the resolution. And likewise, if we move away from the object, then the resolution is much too high so we can lower it. While this works amazingly for our scene with the subdivision surface object where we have a very coarse base mesh that we can basically subdivide infinitely, this is mostly not possible with other assets such as our stand and stand because it already has a very high resolution to begin with that we cannot lower with a subdivision surface object. And as I said in the beginning, when it comes to scans, our stan is even low res compared to nowadays examples. So back to our scene and meshlets. As soon as we've clicked that, Octane will produce multiple lower resolutions of the mesh to exchange dependent on the camera view and what's in frame or not. Coming back to the ID, this is necessary because the levels of detail, for example, of stan here will be cached to the hard drive. We didn't talk about this explicitly, but the whole premise of this is to reduce overhead in the GPU and therefore hold less mesh data in the VRAM. To do so, of course, it would be stupid to hold all the level of details of an object within the VRAM because it would be even more data than we started with. So it has to be streamed from disk dynamically. And I can feel a disturbance in the force from you banging against the screen telling me to finally hit that button. So let's do it. So as soon as I click the button, you can see Octane is updating the objects, preparing the meshlets for the different resolutions. Right now, Octane will start the meshlet generation of every enabled mesh whenever we start rendering a scene or if we re-enable a mesh that is already a meshlet. 
This means that Octane isn't checking beforehand if there is a cached version on disk already and therefore starts the process anyway. While this works quite fluently and fast with our stan, this can take quite a while dependent on the density of the mesh that you're doing. To my knowledge, this is a feature that's already in active development and therefore should arrive before we hit stable with Octane 2026. Now, if you're wondering where this cache is stored on your windows in the explorer, you can go to the address line and type in percentage local app data percentage, hit enter, and in the folder you'll find yourself, search for Octane, then go to cache and then meshlets. And here you can see the meshlet data for our stand. Of course, larger meshes have larger data sets, so be prepared to find a couple of gigabytes in there later on. I just wanted to let you know where to find the stuff, so let's continue in our program. To show off this feature a little bit more, and keen-eyed among you might have seen those tabs down in the live viewer, basically what I did was using the Octane compositing nodes to get out Stan's mesh. What I also did was animating the camera, so frame 50 is not a mistake. If we move closer to frame 0, you can see we get away from Stan, and if we move closer to frame 100, we get closer to Stan. What this gives you in the live viewer is an ability to see the changing resolution of the mesh. Next to the fancy technical demonstration, it's of course always good to see whether a product is serving its purpose, so let's bring up the VRAM usage. Since nowadays Octane is eating away quite a bit of VRAM, what I did was scrolling down in the render settings of Octane and get the parallel samples to 1. This makes rendering a little bit slower, but also lowers the VRAM usage, so we can see changes a little bit better. To see the difference, let's just turn off the mesh LEDs, and we are at 737, and if we turn it on again, then we are at 728. Also, of course, this number will change dependent on the camera position. So if we are further away, this will be smaller. And if you are closer up, this will be higher. As a last section in here, I want to direct your attention to the level of detail selection bias, as this is basically a global bias for the detail. So if we push it to negative numbers, it will show us less detail. And if we push it towards higher numbers, it will show us more detail. Dependent on the proximity of the camera to the object and field of view, this is of course. If I had a wish, I would also love to see this level of detail bias on an object basis, because sometimes it can be necessary to tweak objects rather than the whole scene. And this is already it for this week. Well, how much can you tell about a toggle where you toggle stuff on and off? Also because of that, the length of the video that I had in my mind before had actually matched with the length of the video that I produced. That's very rare. Also very important, keep in mind that this is an alpha build of Octane, so alpha, beta and then after that stable. This feature is still in active production and therefore crashy, and therefore it goes without saying, don't use that in production scenes yet. Alrighty, so thank you very much for watching till the end. And let's thank those people who made this video possible, as always, my patrons. Especially my 50 euro tier subscribers, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Also, of course, a huge thank you for my 15 euro tier subscribers, for the thieves, Alessio De Vecchi, Ami Schietried, Christian Grajewski, Graham Bucknell, Grigoris Morikis, Joel Mackimer, John Edward, Chris Clemson, Lucas M. Silveira, Mike Rogers, Mikkel Obenhus, Ness Graphics, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Ralph, Random Capybara, Raiko, Shiro2049, Zu Shack, Terry Wayne Ranson, Jan Verbeke, Yasin Rupp, and Yuri Starikov. Hi there and welcome to Rapid Development. Was that too much of a pun? I don't know. I hope you liked this small snappy video though.
please leave ideas for next week's video in the comments down below as there's no more new features inside of Cinema 4D. Right now, the new texture displacement is broken and the texture streaming, so basically meshlets for textures, isn't implemented yet. So I need some other ideas to go with. Of course, if you want to help the fight against the algorithm overlords, what else to post? You probably already thought about this than a rabbit emoticon. Thank you again for watching and sticking with me till the end. This leaves me with my final words. Have a great start of the week, or if you're watching this later, a fantastic time ahead. And I say, happy meshletting. Bye.